When you're sitting on the surface, what's going on underneath is out of sight, it's out of mind. Being in the water, there's no sound except your breathing, but you're able to focus and, and watch what's going on. It's a unique experience, but as a biologist, it's incredibly important in terms of being able to understand the ecology, understand how the system is working. You know, I, I love working for the Nature Conservancy. I love working on uh, the, the sort of projects that I do, native fish restoration. I feel good about going to my job every day. Uh, it's very proactive work. My favorite part of my job is to ask questions about why things are the way that they are and then come up with ways to answer those questions. I just feel lucky that I have the opportunities to study these resources that impact others. My position with DNR Fish Division is a Great Lakes Research Fisheries Biologist. I get to monitor all the changes that are occurring in the lake and try to determine what those impacts are and how can we manage for the best fishing opportunities and the healthiest populations of fish. Each partner brings a different specialty to the table, but I would say we share a common excitement for the idea that this project is really a new way of looking at solving some of the problems in the Great Lakes. Essentially we're trying to restore or help restore populations of lake trout, lake whitefish and lake herring. There are three spawning reefs right here off the coast of Elk Rapids in Lake Michigan. These spawning reefs are uh, important because they're the last places that we know of that lake herring still spawn in Lake Michigan. They're also a spawning habitat for lake trout and lake whitefish. A spawning reef is a buildup of rocks. When the fish come into that site to spawn, they deposit eggs. Those eggs then settle into the spaces within those rocks. If the eggs are left at the surface, when waves come through, they're going to wash those eggs off and, and ultimately those eggs are not going to survive. Ideally, what you want is for those eggs to settle down into the spaces between the cobbles. And the deeper they go in, the more protected those eggs will be from wave action and hopefully from predators. Two of the reefs are really high quality, and the third one is not very high quality. We're going to place new rock on top of that habitat that's been degraded, and we're going to try to place the rock in a way that mimics the better habitat. The reef will be used by more lake trout, lake whitefish, and lake herring for spawning. And when those fish do spawn on the reef, we'll see high success of those eggs. Down the line, 10, 20 years from now, we expect that the number of lake trout, lake herring, and lake whitefish will increase in Grand Traverse Bay, and hopefully in Lake Michigan. Can we actually take an area that isn't functioning as well, that's been degraded by human activity, and get it to function like the prime habitat. We've measured exactly what the dimensions are, exactly the type, amount, and size of rock that needs to be placed on it to increase the egg survival and the spawning success of these native fish. I was contacted this spring by Matt Herbert with the Nature Conservancy about placing rocks in Elk Rapids. Once we left Iron 10, it calmed down enough for us to make it around South Point near the cement plant in Charlevoix and head down to Elk Rapids through Grand Traverse Bay. I grew up on tugboats with my grandfather and it just kind of keeps going from generation to generation. The boat that we use for this project is the Wendy Ann. It was built in 1955 and Wendy and I ended up with this boat in 2007 and totally refurbished it, put a new engine, transmission, everything on it. And uh, we've been using it extensively on the Great Lakes the past few years. It's fun, it's exciting, it's a challenge. Um, there's something different every day. No two jobs are the same. When it's ready, there should be about a, there should be about a seven foot depth. We've got a pole that we can shoot in right. and measure and make sure, you know, make sure it's right around seven feet. So. Okay. So we can, when you guys, you guys can work back and forth until you think that might be about right. And it might be that maybe there needs to be more on this side or more on that side, but, but we can shoot in and, and do that. All right. Does that sound right? Sounds great. Okay. Everything's going good with, uh, with the rock placement. They've, you know, there's a great barge crew. Uh, so they did a great job getting that barge positioned perfectly so they can place the rock. There's a certain way that we want to focus uh, uh, on place in the rock so that so that we get the right depths and the right places that we need. 
Do you think you can focus initially right down the middle? I can definitely try. Let me uh, try and get in position here and I'll see what we can do here. Roger. Once you start dumping rocks in the lake, there's that the lake bottom gets stirred up, all the silt. So you can't see the rocks as they're going down. So you have to kind of have a photographic memory of where you placed each bucket with the excavator and just do an even grid pattern across the bottom so that you try to get it as even as possible. It's almost unbelievable because we've been talking about this for so long, planning for it for so long, all the research that went into this, and it's pretty unbelievable to be to this day. So we're all very excited about it. Every now and then we're going to be checking the depths and making sure we're seeing the depths that we need to see. So, this, this is okay. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a dip around there. Which, which is what we wanted. Okay. Lindsay, how's this corner? Over, right over here. Sorry? Is this corner looking yeah. good? Let me just do this one here. Okay. The shape of the existing reef habitat is, is kind of in a triangle and we definitely want to build that triangle up about three feet. The most important thing is to increase the depth on the, on the existing reef. So it's probably six. Okay. Sort of six. Okay. Five, six feet. So, okay. And certainly I, I thought this far side actually looked quite nice. Okay. It's a bit higher yeah. places, but... Excellent. Growing up on the Great Lakes and working with commercial fishermen my whole life, um, to help the fish population grow and continue is, uh, is pretty special. If you're thinking about conservation from a global perspective, you've got to be thinking about the Great Lakes. And there's not a lot of habitat restoration that goes on in the Great Lakes. So we're very excited about having a nice, tangible project to restore habitat. In general, the Nature Conservancy's work is proactive. We usually out ahead of things and trying new things, and this project is, is exactly that.